Today, June 14th, is Flag Day. In honor of Flag Day, I am standing beside the American flag positioned here in the sanctuary of St. John's Lutheran Church. I stand here by the flag to honor it, but not to worship it. As a Christian, I worship Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I honor the United States flag, but I do not worship it. My worship is reserved only to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed Trinity. Since Flag Day falls on a Sunday this year, standing by the flag is an introduction to my sermon I wish to share with you now. The flag here represents us as citizens of the United States of America, and to this nation we hold our allegiance. As citizens of this nation, to which this flag represents, we are to serve and act as good citizens in word and in deed to our land and people and work towards the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for all people. As Christians, to which this sanctuary and church represents as a place of worship, you and I are called and commissioned by the Holy Spirit in baptism to proclaim and live by the gospel or good news of Jesus Christ crucified, risen, ascended, and coming again. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. In today's gospel reading from the gospel according to Matthew for this second Sunday after Pentecost, the gospel writer Matthew records several instructions of Jesus to his 12 called disciples. The gospel text is Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 to chapter 10 verse 23 if you care to read it on your own. The text begins with Jesus' statement, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This statement not only applied to Jesus' disciples, but it applies to us his present disciples now. Later in the text, Jesus sends these 12 disciples on their first mission to proclaim the kingdom of God or heaven has come near with instructions as to how they are to do this in their own day and time. Today, especially during the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, and the new normal, how do we as postmodern disciples proclaim the gospel and the kingdom of God for mission to the world and in our own nation? The Christian Church and the ELCA and our own Synod, along with its bishop and staff, are finding ways to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in a virus-plagued nation and world. My video sermon to you is one of those ways. And when we are permitted to return to this sanctuary to worship together, our style and manner of worship will adapt to living in a COVID-19 virus prevention and safety for all. Our nation on this Flag Day is also in the midst of coming to grips with ongoing racism, overt, as tragically shown in the killing of George Floyd, and hidden in the attitudes of bigotry and prejudice and racial profiling by certain people. It is a time of national re-examination of our character, values, and systemic racism against people of color, culture, creed, and lifestyle. 
in an attempt to address this sin of racism and the violence it ignites, the ELCA has designated June 17 as a commemoration of the Emmanuel Nine to be included in our church calendar year of commemorations. This Wednesday will be the first observance of the tragedy of the killing of nine members of the Emmanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina by a young white extremist who happened to be a member of the Lutheran Church. I conclude with a litany of remembrance for the Emmanuel Nine. We join with Mother Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in remembering the slain nine, the Reverend Clementa C. Pinckney, the Reverend Daniel Lee Simmons, Cynthia Marie Graham Hurd, the Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, the Reverend Myra Singleton Quarries Thompson, Taiwanza Kibwe Deal Sanders, the Reverend DePayne Middleton Doctor, Susie Jackson, and Ethel Lee Lance, and those who survived, we remember. We remember that they lovingly welcomed the stranger into a Wednesday night Bible study. They sang, they prayed, they gathered to study the Word of God. We remember. We pray for the continual presence of God's peace. May it comfort and surround the families of the nine who were slain. We remember. We pray for the African Methodist Episcopal Church, its senior bishop and Episcopal leaders, the community of Charleston, and all who continue to grieve, trusting that God will continue to unite us in the work to end racism and white supremacy so that we may be witnesses of Christian unity. We remember. We remember the legacy of the Reverend Pinckney and his fight for racial justice for his parishioners and his community. Let us not only be moved by emotion, but also be moved toward action. We remember. We call the United States to remember and confront its history of racial injustice. We must not forget the crimes committed against humanity in the name of Christ, the land theft from a genocide of indigenous peoples and the enslavement of black bodies that built this nation. We remember. We call this country to remember the policies and practices that excluded Chinese immigrants and that forced the internment of Japanese Americans. We remember. We call this country to remember the exploitation of migrant farm workers from Latin and Central America and the separation of families at the U.S. southern border. We remember. We remember the faith leaders whose lives are a living witness to black liberation and womenist theology in the struggle for black freedom. Bishop Richard Allen, Absalom Jones, Sojourner Truth, Denmark Vesey, Jehu Jones, Daniel Payne, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Ida B. Wells, James Cone, and Katie Cannon. We remember. We remember the unarmed innocent black lives lost at the hands of law enforcement. Eric Garner, Lakeen McDonald, Sandra Bland, Sean Bell, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Michael Brown, Freddie Gray, Tamir Rice, Walter Scott, Atalina Jefferson, George Floyd, and many others known and unknown. We remember. We remember the innocent, unarmed black bodies that were racially profiled, shot and killed because whiteness stood its ground. Emmett Till, Terry Vaughn Martin, Jordan Davis, Amald Aubrey, Renisha McBride, and many others known and unknown, we remember. As we remember living God, may we be remembered as your body, 
connected to one another, and empowered for the work you call us to do in the name of Jesus and by the power of his renewing spirit. Amen. <laughs>